Today, the Valdosta State Blazers face off against the Florida Tech Panthers at Baysmore Hyder Stadium in a Go South Conference matchup. Both teams are 3-2 and two in conference play this season. Each team needs to win the rest of its games to have a shot at playoff berth. Last weekend, Valdosta State put off an impressive win against Delta State that ended with a final score of 34-13. Blazer freshman quarterback Rogan Wells had an outstanding game with 15 completions for 233 passing yards and one passing touchdown. On the ground, he went for 97 yards and a touchdown. Wells received support from the Black Swarm defense, which had four turnovers that included three interceptions and a forced fumble. This win was the second in a row for the Blazers, and they look to extend that streak today. The Florida Tech Panthers also had an impressive win last weekend as they defeated the West Alabama Tigers 41-39. West Alabama was undefeated in conference play prior to this matchup. The Panthers' offense was firing off on all cylinders with a total of 484 total yards of offense. Florida Tech quarterback Mark Cato had a big day, completing 22 passes for 345 yards and two passing touchdowns. Panthers running back Antoine Haynes had a great game as well with 114 rushing yards and two rushing touchdowns. Today's matchup consists of two high-power offenses that should light up the scoreboard. Stay tuned for Gulf South Conference action Coming up next on VSU TV. Batty, let me be honest with you. Won't filing for Social Security benefits online be confusing? George, it's simple and easy, and you can do it in your pajamas from the comfort of your own home. Oh, my. You've navigated through asteroid belts, right? Oh, sure, plenty of times. Well, compared to that, navigating SocialSecurity.gov is a snap. Really? It's so easy. Even Kirk could do it. <laughs> Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to Baysmore Hyder Stadium at Valdosta State University. My name is Bo Blair. And I'm Paul Rose. As we get you set for Blazers football on VSU TV. Big game on hand today as the Florida Tech Panthers face off against your VSU Blazers. Yeah, both of these teams are fresh off a pair of upset wins as the Panthers took down the number 18 West Alabama Tigers 41-39 last week. Valdosta State silenced the Delta State Statesman with a 34-13 victory on the road. We'll soon find out if Mark Cato can put on another all-star performance or if the Blazer Black Swarm defense can continue to keep the ball out of the offense's hands. We have the Blazers and the Panthers. This Gulf South Conference matchup is coming up on VSU TV. Stay tuned. I love learning. I believe in service. I am full of passion. I embody sportsmanship. I trust in my resourcefulness. I like balance. That's why I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose. I chose Division Two. Hey everybody, as we get going, the Valdosta State Blazers defer to return the kickoff at the beginning of the game. As the Panthers kicker boots the ball downfield and it goes way out of bounds. Looks like ball will be spotted at the 15 yard line. We're gonna have a kick out of bounds, intentional. And the VSU Blazers get the ball on the 35-yard line. So they take the field after their huddle. And Russell. Rogan Wells steps back in shotgun position. Defense lines down. We've got three-man front. Everyone gets down on the ball. Let's see if we don't start this off with a run to the left right here. And there That's it is. Snap. Good for about three yards on the carry. Ball down to about the 38-yard line. That was good for about three on the play. Second down and seven. Rogan Wells 
back in the shotgun position again. Steps back, get another sign. Ball is snapped. Oh, and Santa. he takes the ball and he's running with it. Gets close to the first down marker. We're Let's gonna see if the refs. Spot him at the 45 yard line, it seems. This is going to be a really interesting matchup here because um, the Florida Tech defense actually got blown out last game and their offense really carried them. We'll see how if the Blazers can uh, exploit them. The Blazer offense has been pretty efficient the past few games. All right, Blazers take the ball again. First down for the Blazers. Running back sets up. Shotgun position. Flag is down on the play. It's going to be false start on the Blazers. Five-yard penalty. It'll still be first and 15 for the Blazers. Got the eye formation here. Let's see what we got. Going to move him to the left, see if it's going to run to the right. All right. Blazers seem to be struggling with their communication with the coach right now. Ooh, run up the middle. All right, they're just stuffing this run game right here. Got maybe about half a yard on that play. Second down and 14. That was a run by Isaiah Johnson up the middle. All right, got Rogan back again. See, he's playing a check down on the play. Got Rogan Wells, takes a snap, he's looking to pass, and he's running with it Steps to up. the left. We'll see if he can get some space. And he's going to take it out of bounds right around the 45-yard line. Great block by Dallas Baldner on the play on that one. Gave, got the VSU. Back in the eye formation, maybe third down and 10. Let's see if the Blazers can get it right here. Let's we'll see if we can break Right back, a hole Isaiah Johnson defense. step to the right. We got space to the right here. Sets back, pass play. Let's see if he got the first down, incomplete. Yeah, he stepped out right at the 52 yard line there. That brings fourth and ten for the Blazers. Probably going to punt here, bring on the punt team. That was a hard stop for Florida Tech. Let's see if we can't wear them down a little bit, have a better drive next time. Got Gavin Wilson back to take the punt. Punt returner Demarius Frazier. Back to receive the kick. Gavin yeah. takes it. Nice little short punt, middle of the field. Calls for a fair catch, and it will be down right around the 24-yard line. Excuse me. 14-yard 14 line. 14-yard line. All right, the Florida Tech offense takes the field. Quarterback make. Mark Cato. Got the Blazer defense with their debut. We have cornerback Steven DeRozier, free safety Brandon Rowe, cornerback Raymond Palmer, Andre Johnson, Golf Ivy. In the shotgun position, Mark Cato takes the snap, run up the middle. Play keeps going and is stuffed for about a three yard gain on the play. Now, this defense is what the Valdosta State fans should really be excited about. We need to see what they're going to do, if they can keep this trend of turnovers on. Last week, they had three interceptions and a fumble recovery, good for a touchdown. Let's we'll see if they can't stop them again. Number 12 for the offense, Mark Cato, two-time Gulf South Conference Offensive Player of the Week. Let's we'll see if he can bounce back and do it again. 
the same shotgun position, Mark Cato. And he takes a snap. Hands okay. it. Oh, fake play. Pass up the middle. Wide open. Wide open. Gets him down right around the 48-yard line. Big play for the yeah. Florida Tech offense. They really just opened the defense up on the left side of the field right there. Uh, need better communication from number 14 and 15 on the defense. We had number we had Steve DeRozier and Brandon Rowe miscommunication there. Blazers line down. Looks like they have five. Looks like they're about to send a blitz right here. Let's see if they stay to it. Probably go with a running play right here. Hand off to Antoine Hayes. Run up the middle. Gets about six on the play. Good little gain right there. Key to success for Florida Tech. They're really going to have to keep mixing it up, you know, because uh, VSU just, they're just ball hawks with the interceptions. So they're going to have to really keep them on their toes if they want to come out on this one. And the defense just has to stand up. Look for another pass in here, or another running play here. We got about a second and five. Let's see if this isn't a run to the left right here. It's Hand off, right up the middle. Right up the middle. And it is stopped for a two-yard gain. Brings up third down and three. Florida Both Tech gets a sign looking. from. We've got substitutions on the Florida Tech. Looks like we have two running backs in the game now. Antoine Hayes and Sakai Lindsey joins the game as a handoff to number 20. That would be Corey Lane. A one yard gain for Big hit right there. Looks like we had number six on that play, Malik Slater. And that looks like it'll be good to do a fourth and short and it looks like they're gonna punt. Let's see if they don't do anything tricky here. They line it down. Got one gunner to the right. Kyle Gillickson back to punt. Letting the clock eat. Good punt down to around the 10 yard line and it bounces into the end zone. That'll be a touchback taken back at the 20. Dallas Ballner back to return that. So far, nothing in this game. We have eight minutes left in the first half. See which team will score first. What do you think, Bo? Uh, man, I'm hoping for the Blazers. <laughs> Definitely pulling for. Blazers in a huddle now, coming back, taking the field. Let's see what Rogan Wells has to do with this in this drive. Right, we got doubles lined down on the line. We have. I formation, runner back steps up. Checking to a different play. Let's see if we get the jet Run. sweeper. We have an option. Gain of about two on the play for the Blazers. That brings up second and eight. Rogan Wells takes a snap, struggles, oh. And he is sacked for a big loss on the play. Loss of about 10, it brings him back to the 13 yard line. It's a good shot down the field right there. See if we can get something going. I don't think we've had a play yet to go for more than 10 to 15 yards for the Blazer offense. 
Mark Cato steps back again. And he takes the snap. Run back steps up. Drops back for the pass. Dumps it right over to number 23. Isaiah Johnson and gets close to the first down. He gets, gets hit pretty hard. Tatted on that hit. But again, close to the first down, but that'll bring fourth and about two. So the punt team comes back out onto the field. We got strong side linebacker Patrick Banks on that tackle. Absolutely clocked him on that play. Gavin Willis comes back out for his second punt on the game. Looks like we may have had a number swap before this game. I believe that's Jordan Germany back there in the backfield wearing number 23. Usually wears number 20 for the Blazer offense. Taken down by the head. Yeah, that looked like it could have been a flag. A little bit of face mask there, but it looks like they get away with it. Max Erdman for the Florida Tech Panthers returned that ball. Got absolutely smoked. Got rung by the head and taken down. And you already know coach is getting his players right on the field or on the sideline trying to figure out what's going on see if we can't get something going on offense Marcato back out on the field in shotgun position gets a snap handoff up the middle and is about a six yard gain on the play that brings up second and four for the Florida Tech Panthers. See if VSU can't get another stop. They really need to get something going on offense. They've actually had eight attempts rushing for only 12 yards so far. Marcato talking to his line, steps back. Hearing a little snap. something from the crowd Hand here. Hand off to Lindsey. Lindsey out the middle, finds a gap. Lindsey with a gain of about 20 on that play. He absolutely tore through the middle of the field that time. Looks like they have a little miscommunication in the D-line. Chains move down the field. Florida Tech has the ball on the 50-yard line. Watch the defensive tackles here as they're just getting washed away. Just a wide open hole for the running back to run through. They got four down front. Got seven in the box. We have Mark Cato spread out to a wide receiver. Comes back. Oh, fumble on the play. Oh, they get the ball back. And he's taken down for a six-yard gain on the play. That looked like a little miscommunication on that play for the Florida Tech Panthers. Really interesting play there. That was the uh, starting quarterback, Mark Cato, going out to the right for a uh, jet sweep. It looks like that was about to be a double pass off to the left side of the field, but he just couldn't cut it, keep it together and fumbled the snap there. Corey back. Lane back to Mark Cato. Backup quarterback Trent Chimelik with that fumble on the snap. He takes the snap, Oops, steps back, pass, over the middle. Right oh. over the middle, wide and open. It is a touchdown that for is. Florida Tech football. Yeah, he really just had him beat stride for stride on that one. Um, there's not much you could do on that. Wide open pass over the middle of the field. Mark Cato just has a dime. So he throws it right over the middle. And let's see if they go for one here. Don't be surprised if they start going for some crazy extra points here, some crazy plays, because they need anything they can get to get these offenses rolling. Snaps back, holding the kick, and is good straight through the uprights. Zachary Leatherman so look at the back coach. to kick on that one. Coach is still keeping him up. Look, he's just telling him. He's just like, let's keep going. It's going to happen. It's going to be a high-scoring game. Let's keep him down. That's Danny Verpel, defensive coordinator over there, letting us know, letting him know, trying to figure out what's going on with his Blazer defense right now. 
Jarius Jones and Steven Denmark back to receive the kick. So we got two back to return this time. Kenny Benjamin and Dallas Baldner. Kyle Gillickson back to kick for the Florida Tech football. Hand up, walking forward towards the ball. And he boots it. Kind of a squib kick. Down to number four. Simon Williams takes it, runs up the middle, and keeps trucking through everybody. Gets down to about the 22-yard line, 23-yard line. Really just another ugly kick by the Florida Tech special teams. Really almost went out the same spot as last time where they got the last penalty. Managed to keep it in, get it for a good little 10-yard score. Simon Williams on that. And here comes the Blazer offense. Let's see if they can get anything rolling this time. I'm sorry, not Simon Williams. That was Kenny Benjamin for Valdosta State. Simon Williams, Florida Tech. Got receivers stacked both sides. Number three, Joe Jackson is back to play quarterback. Jordan Germany steps to his side. Takes a snap. Hand off to Jordan Germany. Oh, it's a fake. Runs up the middle. Good run on that play. Gets about seven yards. That'll make it second and three. For Valdosta State to keep things mixed up on that, you're going to see that a lot. Rogan really likes to run the football there, and they have a good back to take it too. So you're really, they're really going to keep the defense on their toes with that. We got five down on the line. Got one backing out. Let's see if this isn't a blitz. Should have been. There's a flag down on the play. That'll be offsides right there. The left. Looks like the left side linebacker. Not sure which one that was. Rest Easy call. It. This Florida Tech defense getting really excited, ju jumping the gun. That was number 27 there on that offsides, Marquise Lewis, redshirt sophomore out of Coco High School. One thing that's really interesting about both of these teams, a lot of their players are from Florida, with Florida Tech obviously being in Florida. But Valdosta State, over 75% of their team just pulling recruits out of Florida. I'm back in the same position on offense. It'll be first down and 10 for the Blazers. Jordan Jeremy steps up and sets back a pass. Ooh, shakes him. Oh, good block. <clears throat> Throw just a little off. Did a really good job. Devontae Jones right there to receive. Really good throw. job getting out of that. Um, it looked like he kind of lost his composure a little bit there. But uh, that was a really good breaking that sack. He actually swapped his arm, swapped the ball to his other arm, broke loose from that. Could have been a sack. A little low on the play. And they get back, line down. Two stack receivers on both sides. Jordan Johnson back to take the snap. That left side again. A little communication. Watch that left side again. They're really happy on that. Looks like they're going to bring a blitz, and it's play. a blitz. Run up the middle. About a two-yard gain on the play. Jordan Germany. The two-yard carry will be about, it'll be third and about seven. This really does seem like a game of inches here. Besides that one big play by Mark Cato, long pass has been literally just a few yards both ways on every way on the offense, both sides. Jordan Johnson back to take the snap. Four wide receivers on the play. Steps back to pass. And confusion on that one. Don't really know where he's throwing that ball. Incomplete play. It'll bring up fourth down for the Blazers. Yeah, we got two minutes, 39 seconds left in this half, or in this quarter. 
Florida Tech up by seven. Really, this first quarter has just flown by. Just the clock's pretty much not really stopped. Punter Gavin Wilson back for his third kick on the day. This is the Gulf South player of the week, right? Month, actually. Let's see if he can't pin him deep. And a short punt. Fair catch called. That brings the Florida Tech Panthers to about the 30-yard line. Let's see if the Wait. Blazer defense can do anything here to stop the Florida Tech Panthers. We'll see if they don't try to get them deep again here. Their two biggest plays have been just ripping the defense wide open in the middle of the field and on the closest side of your screen here. Marcato back getting snap, gets a snap, hands it off, run up the middle. Good run for the Florida Tech offense. They just continue to push through that middle right there. They're just pounding the Blazer defense. That's good for about six on the play. That'll bring up second and four. At this rate, it's pretty obvious to see what plays they want to run. I mean, they're just tearing them up through between the tackles and then just right over the safety every time. Trips out to the left. Number 12, back to take the snap, hands it off again, run to the left, finds a gap again. There it is. Taken down on the 46-yard line. That's that run right between the tackles yet again. Be first down for the Panthers, the 46-yard line. Getting the play, doing some substitutions for the Panthers. Marcato back to take the snap. Hand off to the left side. It's the same run, second time in a row. They're just exploiting Antoine the Stottle Hayes. State defense here. Antoine Hayes with a three yard gain on the carry. He's second down and seven. Clock continues to roll here. We're right at a minute. See if they can make an adjustment here and stuff this. I won't be surprised. There's another run to the left, and it is. Nope. Or drops no. back to pass. Deep throw. Can they get there? Nope. Overthrown by Marcato. Marcato really shows his arm strength right there. That ball landed right out of bounds in between the pylons of the end zone. VSU's really going to have to watch that to see that left side run has just been wearing them down, and I think it fooled most of them again. Mark Cato's power is really just deception on the field. His ability to throw, you just have to respect the run as well. Got Austin Tate makes another shift on the D line. Got trips right side for the Florida Tech Panthers. We got some cute confusion on the field. Let's see what's going on here. Mark Cato takes a snap, steps back to pass. He's open. Finds some open space, runs to the right. Down right about the first yard line. Nice little first baseball slide right there, Mark Cato. Let's see if the rest will give it to him. Defense really locked him up on that one. He had nowhere to go with that, but he really showed his skill to escape right there. Both quarterbacks, really mobile, really exciting to see. And that's going to force them to punt. We have a fourth and short again. We're rolling out of the first quarter here, less than 10 seconds on the clock. Number 36, Kyle Gillickson, back to punt again. And that's going to be the end of the half, so they'll take this time to rebuttal their troops and see what they can do to get this going. Score, Florida Tech, 7, Valdosta State, 0. The Valdast Area Rotary Clubs have united with the First Foundation for Childhood Literacy and the Dolly Parton Imagination Library to mail age-appropriate books to registered children in Lowndes County, ages from birth to age five. 
Your local Rotary Clubs are raising funds and taking donations. For more information, call 244-5159. Want you help us? A childhood literacy project of the Valdosta Area Rotary Clubs. And we're back, beginning of the second half. And we're back, beginning of the second half. Ball taken right on the other side of the 50-yard line. Looks like it's down to the 47. Kenny Benjamin back to take the punt. Let's see if he can make anything happen with this. Florida Tech has an interesting little huddle here with the punt, trying to throw the Blazer defense off. All right. And ball is snapped. Punt goes out of bounds to the right. Nothing that the Blazers could have done with that one. I don't know what it is about the uh, – Florida Tech kickers, they tend to like to kick it out of bounds. That was Dallas Baldner back to return that, not Kenny Benjamin. That's my bad. Blazer offense out again. We'll see if they can get something going this time. Number three, Rogan Wells, back out on the field. Be interesting if this offensive drive we could get across the 50. Let's see what we got. All right, line gets down on the ball. Snap to Rogan Wells. Fake throw, hand up, run up the middle. It's a good run there. That's a lot like what Florida Tech's been running against us. Just got to get something going, get a little deception going, just like them. Our offenses are really similar, actually. Good run. It'll be six yards on the play. It brings up second and four. Rogan Wells back again to take the snap. Got two to the right, up back, see if he doesn't motion out. Little communication on the play. Watch the fullback here, see if he doesn't do something special. Big handoff, sets back to pass, passes down the field. Great catch. Easy catch. It looks like we have a flag down right where the catch was made. Um, it looks like it's going to be Trayvon Roberts on the catch. I think it's going to be a pass interference on the defense. Slight possibility it could be on the offense, but we'll see what the head ref says. He caught that right on the 31-yard line. If that stands, it's against Florida Tech. That will put the ball. It looks like they are giving that penalty Blazers. to Florida Tech. So the Blazers move way down the field on that play. First big play for the Blazers on the day. Looks like they declined the penalty there. Watch the fullback lined up here, see if he doesn't lead us right to the play. I think we're going to have a run to the right here. And we have two players on that side. Rogan Wells back to snap. Steps back to pass again. Big pass down the Watches field. It. That's Another definitely pass interference. Definitely defensive pass interference right there. He had arms all over him. That was number 12 for the Panther defense. Who we have. Karen Stevens, sophomore out of Mississippi Valley State with a penalty. Yeah, that was blatant right there. He really just put his hand all in his pads right there. We got a good for a first down. And we'll be taking it from the 15-yard line. This drive looks promising here. Rogan Wells back with Ron Johnson again. We'll see if they actually run this play, if they attempt to do the same pass and play again, try to get in the end zone. Let's see if they don't try that right side out again. Looks like they're really wanting it. Back to pass. Right up the middle, little dump pass. The ref got in the way on that one. Good play, though. It's good enough for a first down on the five-yard line for the Blazers. I think he got wrapped up a little bit before that, but it looks like the ref almost interfered on that play. It's good for another first down. Looks like it's right down, right on the five yard line. 
Blazers are setting up the run here. Taking it back up in the pass. Rogan Wells holds up his line, communicates a little bit. Coach Bell made a check on that play. Ball is hiked, steps back to pass. Dump over the top and just overthrows a wide receiver. It's really high snap. He nearly lost that snap there. It actually went right over his head. Rogan Wells did a really good job snagging that one right out of the air. And the clock stops at 12.54 and we have a second down and five. Shane Henderson was the wide receiver on that play. All righty, Rogan Wells, back to take the snap. Sends out, runs up the middle, takes it, and is stuffed for a two-yard gain on the play. That'll bring up third down and three for the Blazers. Interesting for the first half. Both teams had less than five first downs on their drives. VSU actually had eight rushes for only 16 yards. Let's see if they don't open up that run game here. Blazers finally get some momentum on their side. Get chance from the crowd here. Rogan Wells takes out the middle, finds a gap, He's and in. gets in the end zone. Touchdown, Blazers. Walk in, and that's a – We had a little, I'm not going to call it. We had a little bit of roughing in the back of the end zone by the blockers, but yep. Rogan Wells just walks into the end zone. Andrew Gray back to attempt the extra point. Takes a snap, and the right ball is the right down the middle, and it's good. That brings the score to seven and seven. Clock's at 12-16. And the Blazers finally answer back. Bo, what are your thoughts so far going into this game? Both offenses finally on the board. Well, they both came out looking kind of cold. Um, Florida Tech definitely came out with a little bit more fire than the Blazers, but the Blazers finally, finally got a little edge on their side, a little fire under their belt. I think the Blazers had to work a little harder for their, for their score. They actually ran a lot more plays there than Florida Tech did. Florida Tech scored on two big passes. I think about Austin State ran about five to six plays there within the 35. All right, number 41, Andrew Gray, back to kick the ball again. And the ball's away. Short kick. Deep kick. Right up the middle, gets it out to about the 25-yard line. Yeah, both these teams look like they're really playing physical with each other. We've had a, we don't know what that first call was. Looked like it was a pass interference on the Florida Tech defense. We were driving into the end zone. They uh, declined that, but then that one in the back, that was blatantly obvious. Then on that score, it looked like we had a little roughing, but I feel like the refs kind of know what's, what's at stake going into this game. You know, VSU has to win out to keep their playoff berth alive. Marcato. Back to snap with Antoine Hayes next to his side. Sets back to pass. Deep pass up the middle. Look at the protection there. This is number three. Number three is Joe Jackson. Mark Cato just tip, had about four seconds to just tiptoe around in the pocket right there. Didn't even think of moving. Hit that slant route right over the middle of the field. We have a VSU player down on the field. Devontae Weekly on that take. Give the offense a little extra time to figure out what they're going to do to continue this drive. They're going to take the ball from the 
42 yard line. Man, Mark Cato really hasn't missed many passes yet. He's got a bullet of an arm. So that's number 21 there down for VSU. Had to get helped off the field. That was Terrence Bryant, who's a right side cornerback. And Marcato. Marcato back to take the snap again. Shotgun position. Takes a snap. Hand off. Oh. Passes down. Great. Oh, inter Oh, he dropped the ball. Number Almost had that one picked off. Blazer defense with a deflection on that one. That was Steve DeRozier on the left side of the field. Malik Slater, middle linebacker for the Blazers. Almost had that when it was deflected up into the air. Yeah, that was the junior Southeast Missouri State transfer out of Miami, Florida, Steve DeRozier. He did really got good job jumping on that. Once again, really physical play. They're letting these boys play tonight. Marcato, back take the snap again. Two to the right. Hand off up the middle to Antoine Hayes. Good for about a three yard gain on the play. That'll bring up third down and seven. That might have been the, what this defense needed to spark up. DeRozier, the safety. Palmer, hyping up the crowd. Big third down conversion here for the Florida Tech Panthers. Getting a little thunder from the student section. Blazer fans on their feet. They get the play. Set up on the line. Big down here. Third and, sh third and about eight. Sends out Anamon Hayes. Marcato back to pass. There he goes. Long pass over the top. And great defense. No pass interference on that play. Brings up fourth down for the Panthers. And again, that's just an absolute bomb by Mark Cato. Honestly, well covered, very well covered. Hit the hands of the receiver, just couldn't hold on to it. Had the Blazer defense right in his face. And we have a returner back to take it again, Dallas Baldwin. Baldner stepping up really big this year for the team. Let's see if he can't have an impact on this game. It's a really crisp route runner, Dallas Baldner. Kyle Gillickson takes the snap, punts it down the field. Good punt down to the one yard line. Let's see if it stays in. Goes out of bounds on the three yard line. Great punt there. It actually hit right on the half yard line and then it had a backspin on it. Great punt. And now obviously they're going to keep it away from Baldner all they can because he's really explosive runner to get him out on the edge. We're still tied up here in the second quarter. Blazer offense takes the field. Rogan Wells back for a, another offensive drive. We'll see if they go with a uh, running play here to get them out of uh, the red zone. They're going to take it from the five-yard line here. Wells feet right on the goal line. Sends a wide receiver over. Takes a snap. Oh, he goes back for a pass. Great block. Wide open down the field. Gets him out to about the 20-yard line, 21-yard line. Guess who? That was Baldner on the edge. Really bailed out his quarterback right there. Got him out to the 20-yard line. Wells had a really good help right there. Someone come in on a really good block. I believe that was a running back, Jordan Germany. Rogan Wells back to take the snap. Isaiah Johnson to his side. Rogan Wells takes it. Oh, finds a gap up the middle. Great block, great block. 
There he goes. He keeps going. Down to the 50-yard line. Great run by Rogan Wells. Yeah, Wells' feet are an absolute weapon. His offense can keep protecting him like that. It's really going to open up their pass game because they know he can move. They're just coming at him so hard. Defense looking around there trying to figure out how he got out on that one. Let's see if they take a pass on this one. Got Rogan Wells. Left. Rogan Wells communicates with his line. Takes a snap. Sets back to pass. Tries to stay on his feet. Oh. Good job staying alive right there, but his knee just skinned right on the ground as his foot got wrapped up there. Be a two-yard gain on the play. That'll bring up second and eight for the Blazers. That's just the problem. VSU, we just can't, they just can't connect with the deeper pass. They're really getting a lot of short stuff and just out routes. Looks like they swept the, switched the trips here, the far side of the field. Rogan Wells back to take the snap. Antoine Hayes steps in front of him. Back to pass. Good blocking. Gives him. Ooh. Great. Catch. And they get the first down on the 39 yard line. That was Deshaun Blair on that catch. Senior out of Jacksonville, Florida. That was a great catch right there. Right on the sideline, got out to stop the clock. Notice how the running back keeps switching to either the left or the right. Trips back to the right. Rogan Wells back to snap. Communication hey. with the offensive coordinator. Coach Bell talking to him on the sideline. But notice how that running back, he either jumps out to the left or right, and that's to really shift the linebackers right there. See, the mic's going to read him on that. Playcock winding down. Rogan Wells takes the snap. Step back to the pass again. He goes. Good play, gain of about four. Good give to Baldner, but he's just swarmed on that. Great tackle. A little motion VSU's doing isn't seem to doesn't seem to be working on the linebacker core. See, when he steps out to the left or right, that's going to affect which linebacker is going to pick him up responsible. So right now we have the far side. He's going to pick him up. Back snap. Communication play clock winding down. Takes a snap. Step back pass again. Oh. Deflection. Ooh. That was a dangerous play right there. Yeah, nearly, nearly intercepted, but good defense by the Florida Tech Panthers. Looks like they're switching back to doubles. Let's see which side the running back steps off to this time. Antoine Haynes steps to the right. Looks like we're locked up in man here. Big third down conversion here for the Blazers. Let's see what they can do. Keita takes a snap. Goes back to pass again. Takes it for himself. Run up the side. And close to the first down marker. Let's see where they put it. As if it was a surprise. Rogan Wills fakes the handoff again. Takes it out to the right for a good little gain. It's good for a first down. Blazers are really good at just staying alive. It's just they're not getting the big plays to stay up, and they just keep coming up short. Let's see if they can keep it going. Last time they got it this outside of the 50, they scored. Rowell well about to snap. Sends the receiver across. Sets back to pass. Oh. And he's wrapped up on that one. Absolutely swarmed by the defensive line. Huge loss on the play. That was a defensive tackle. Thierry LaFortune. That'll bring up second and 20 for the Blazers. Let's see if they can pick back at this. Another sophomore out of North Miami, Florida. Rogan Wells back by himself. Got five receivers on this play. 
Oh, and he takes him itself up the middle. He's taking it again. Gets him back to nearly the 30. Gets to about the 33-yard line. I'm not sure if it's designed or not, but Rogan Wells just keeps having to keep the drive alive. Can't see if we can get a pass off here. Dallas Baldwin only being targeted once this whole game. Let's see if they can get this right here. Rogan Wells back to snap. Empty backfield. Let's see if he does it again. Runs left. And he throws it. And there's... Gets him about a 10-yard gain, which brings up fourth down and about five. Baldner on that play again. Flag down on the play. Flag down right at the 40. It's on the offense there. Is that holding? Seems to be holding. BSU really hurt themselves right there as if they didn't need it. That would have been a they could fourth at least down, for a well, third down right on the about five to go. Now they got a good third and long. Brought about them back third to the 21 40. here. 43-yard line. Rogan Wells back to snap with. Takes a snap. Steps back. It's a screen right there. And brought down. Oops. No whistle on the play. Still going. Stays alive, but that would be brought down right to about the 37-yard line. That was a screen play. They just let them linemen come right back in again. We had LaFortune and Ian Pittman coming in on that. <laughs> Nearly made it to Wells. That'll bring up the punt team for the Blazers. So they almost made it again. Just the Blazers fell back on that. Penalty really hurt them. Gavin Wilson back to punt. This punt one. hit high. Fair catch by the Panthers. Nice little pooch there. So Florida Tech will get back on offense, and we're still at 7-7. Got four minutes left approximately in the second first half. Excuse me. There's going to be some huge adjustments made at halftime by both teams, definitely. For the Blazers, they're really just not cranking it on offense and just getting ran through on defense. Panthers on the nine-yard line. Mark Cato back to snap. Got the box loaded here. You'll see they don't want to blitz him. Take the snap, hand off, run up the middle. And he is taken down at the 14-yard line. That looked like a designed run to go off the right tackle there. Blazers come up with the ball there. We'll see who, who takes it. Like I said, that was a designed run to the right right there, but they just keep ripping open the middle and even the running back. See, he really just cut back so hard on that. Actually got a good little gain. Second down, about five yards to go. Clock still rolling. Florida Tech down on the line. Mark Cato takes the snap. Drops back to pass. Bullet over here to the right side. Wide open again. First down for the Panthers. He wrestles him down right at the 20, but he just had him by about two steps on that one again. Killing them with these crosses. We'll see if they keep going with this passing 
passing routines. Mark Cato back to take the snap. Little communication between the offense and their coach. Defense set. Let's see what we got here. Looks like we have one linebacker going. Charmaine Hand Washington off to Antoine goes up. Good tackle right there, right up the middle. So we finally get a stop in the middle of the field from the Blazer defense. There's a gain of about one on the play. Bring up second and nine. Looked like that was prior on that tackle. Not much Haynes could have done with that one. No gaps for him to hit. Clock's rolling right under, right over two minutes. Takes the snap. Sets back to pass. Quick pass out to eight, number 81 for a gain of five on the play. Number 81 is Mason Wilfong, tight end. All right, so the clock's still rolling right around two minutes. We're still locked up here, seven and seven, ball on the 27. Four to go, third down. Looking to, the, looking to the crowd again to hype up. Big third down stop for the Blazer defense if they can get this. Offense gets down on the ball. Wide receivers check. Steps back to pass. Shuffle pass right at the middle for a no gain on the play. Huge for the Blazers right there. Antoine Haynes couldn't go anywhere. Immediately hit after he received that ball. Malik Slater, the linebacker, coming up to make that hit. Huge third down stop for the Blazers. Should bring up the punt team for the Florida Tech Panthers. Yeah, and there's no question here. They're definitely going to punt it, or they should. Be a surprise if we see anything else because of how these offenses have been rolling. Let's see what we can get here. We got less than a minute, 27 for first half. So they're going to reset the clock to one minute and 30 seconds on that. Yeah, one minute, 30 seconds. We got four down, four to go. Offense breaks their huddle. Punt team on the field. Number 36, Kyle Gillickson, back to punt. Got Baldner back again to take it. He's got a lot of field this time for once. They're not within the 50, so let's see if Baldner can get his hands on this punt and take it back a little bit. Line up on the ball. Gillickson takes the snap. Boots it down the field. Right to Baldner, and he caught a fair catch. They're not anywhere. Near brings them down to the 33 30 yard line. To 33 yard line. So still yet to let the returner get his hands on the ball. Blazers take the field. Rogan Wells. Back to take the snap again. Jordan Germany right behind him. Germany steps to his side. And hand up run up the middle by Jordan Germany. Finds a gap. Takes it for about a eight yard gain on the play. Watch where that fullback lines up each time they go down. It's kind of running pretty predictive play on there. Got a minute, rolling into a minute in for the first half. Blazers trying to play quick here. Takes the snap, hands it back off Jordan Germany again, busts up the middle, and gets the first down. And they're still driving, they're still going. Down to about the 50, about 49, 50 yard line. 
So Blazer first down, and they're running for it. Clock stopped to move the change right at 49 seconds. Blazers look like they're looking to get some kind of points on the board here. Clock now down to 45 seconds. Germany back behind again. Rugman Wells back to take the snap. Pulling to the left. Fake handoff. Right on him. Blitz coming from the left side. Number 48 was all over him on that. That was Adonis Davis. Wells really couldn't do anything right there. He had a good edge rush right there. Nobody on him. Gonna have to be sure to take care of him. Looked like that was number 71's assignment right there. Brings down second down and 10. Andrew Marshall, that right tackle there. Watch him as he's going to have to try to bottle him up again. Back to pass. Ron Wells goes deep. Oh! Ball game. Caught down to the five-yard line. Absolutely threads to the Two Huge defenders, play. Dallas Baldner finally making a big stop. I was telling you earlier that VSU really looks for him for big plays. If you watch number 71 right there, the tackle for VSU, that was Andrew Marshall. He really bottled up that defensive lineman, that defensive end that got uh, to Wells earlier. Running the middle Davis. by Wells, and it stopped at the two-yard line. Excellent adjustment right there by the offensive line. Rogan Wells finally gets one off deep. Right between two defenders. They're rolling down. Looks like the clock stopped. We got 13 seconds left. Blazers on the two yard line. We got a timeout. Time by VSU. So what do you think? They finally, they finally decided to take a shot downfield there. That was an impressive little ball he threw. That was a risky move. They had uh, two defenders on that receiver right there, but. Rogan Wells found the That ball was really hole. right to the defenders there. Baldner only about 5'10", 5'11", on the chart. Like the again. Both of those just went for the ball, and I don't think they communicated very well on who was going to take the deflection or take the interception, but they paid for it there as it split right between them. Baldner down to the two-yard line. Blazers got a quick playoff there. Didn't go anywhere, though, so they decided to take a timeout. 13 seconds left on the play clock. We'll so see what VSU enough? can do right here. This is enough, we'll see, to get the Blazers on the board and back in this game. They're looking to go 14-7. and seven. Coming to the end of the first half. Blazers down to the two-yard line. Rogan Wells back to snap with Jordan Germany right behind him. Let's see Watch what they Germany can do right here at this play. Look at Stuart Spence, the fullback right there. See, this is going to run his way for that extra power. Drops back to pass. Throw. Passes a little high and out of bounds. Yeah, it's an easy catch. A little high ball, but he caught that out of bounds. Deshaun Blair. See if they can capitalize on this. We got third down, three to go. Ball on three. Blazers get down on the line. And we have a stop. We have a timeout Time. for Florida Tech now. Coach didn't like something he saw. Ref had to run out on the field and call that. That was first time out of the half for Florida Tech. It's something they didn't like to see there. It's the last thing Florida Tech needs for VSU to go into the locker room, at least seven up. It'll be a big momentum swing for the Blazers. Everyone trying to get their play calls right right now. So what did you see in that play, Bo? That last one right there, it was good. The cornerback right there just put just a little bit too much skin on just to push him out of bounds, but it was enough to still be still be a fair, fair yeah. play. The offense is looking is it's odd. They're looking kind of like nervous as they're making this big play. Like they finally get it and they're just jumping on it, trying to they, they Rush one a, up on the board. Yeah, they got a couple uh, successful plays with the passing, but I think they should have ran the ball right there to at least cut the distance down just a little bit, try to get an extra yard or two. Yeah, I agree. We'll, we'll see how they line up on this, see if they don't do a run package. All right. Both teams back out on the field. Look for number 36 on the offense, Stuart Spence. We have him on the left side here. He's lined up as a tight end. Okay. Stuart Spence to the back right. to the other side. 
Jordan Jeremy it. steps to the left. See if this isn't a run to the right Takes here. Takes a snap. Run in the middle is. by Jordan. Down to the one yard line. That'll bring up fourth down with two seconds left on the clock. All right, we got two seconds left. And it looks like they called another timeout. Just another in timeout time. for Blazers. For VSU. That was a run to the right right there by Jordan Germany. So there's three seconds left on the clock here. Got fourth down and one to go. How about that? What are we going to do here? This is a nail biter here as we come down to the last couple seconds in the second quarter. Next time it'll be $175. See what they got. I got the kicker warming up over there. Let's see if they think about it. Boot this one through the uprights, try to get up just right before they go into the locker rooms. If I'm Blazer offense, I mean, there's a chance we might be going for it here. Should be able to get a little push. Good solid run. I think they can get in there. Look like Spence, the fullback. Spence, the fullback, was uh, lined up wrong there. He originally was a tight end on the left side, and then he pulled to the right. See if they can't get another push They're going here. for it. That's Three seconds left call. on the clock. Roman Wells back to take the snap. Jordan Germany right behind him. This is going to be a Steps run to here. to the left. See if it isn't to the right again. See if and he takes in. it himself. Touchdown, Blazers. Easy car out there. Right to the clock goes down to zero. So we are 13-7 in the first half, and it comes to an end. Huge play for the Blazers. There's a massive hole right there to the right side. That was an easy play call right there. I know everyone was expecting Germany to get the ball, and then, like I said, watch the fullback right there. VSU really likes running it right off the tail of Spence. Rogan Wells in the end zone. No one even touched him. Going for the extra point right now. And booted through the uprights. Right and that down is good. The middle. That brings the score to 14 to 7, VSU. 14 7. Blazers up, and the players going back to the locker room, and we will be right back on VSU TV. Here, we are a community of 11,000 individual stories. A place where all doors are open. Your home away from home. Where you will make lifelong connections. And you will never feel invisible. Here, you. We'll write it, research it, sing it, broadcast it, share it, serve it, teach it, nurture, and own it. VSU, over 100 majors, championship athletics, and just far enough away from home. Find out what VSU can do for you. And we're back. The score now is 14 to 7. VSU over Florida Tech Panthers. VSU is going to Kick the ball off to Florida Tech. Two back deep. Got two back deep. So that first half was interesting. We have no turnovers by either side. And we have Rogan Wells leading the entire game for rushing yards. Deep kick for the Blazers. Takes it on the one yard line. Goes straight in the middle. Big, oh, fumble on the play. Absolute tattoo. Blazers get the ball back. Fumble. Blazer football on the 21-yard line. Huge play for the Blazers. Good hit, putting his helmet right on the ball. As the Florida Tech there. defense comes out to take the field, VSU Blazers offense is in a huddle right now. Number 25 on that recovery. So we got the offense lining up back at the beginning. So like I was saying, Rogan Wells is leading Blazer offense again in rushing yards. Little jump on the defensive side there. Snap ball, 
Drops back to pass. Shuffle pass to. Takes it up, down to the four yard line. Isaiah Johnson catching on that shuffle pass, and this offense is just running on a different leg right now. That's a, that's a big gain. We haven't seen a play like that the whole game. So both teams have only had a kick return. Before that, they've had one for both for 18 yards. No punt return on the day for either team as both balls have just been boomed. Roman Wells back to take the snap. Tight end goes across, drop back to pass. Over the middle. Oh. And Intercepted in the end zone. Easy interception for the Florida Tech right offense, defense, my bad. Really underthrew that receiver. He was nowhere. That ball was just way too low. Blown chance there by the VSU Blazers to get in the end zone. Capitalized by the Panthers so they to take that, that down the away. other way. VSU really threw that one away. Um, it's one of the first balls Rogan Wells really aired out, and now it's to the defense. Let's hope this didn't crank down the V State defense, and we'll see if the offense can capitalize. We've yet to see the Gulf South Conference Offensive Player of the Week so far. It's Mark Cato is yet to show us. Mark Cato back to pass. Loads it up, sends it downfield. Flag down on the play. That's going to be pass interference. Steve DeRozier on that. He had way too much. He was already up and over the shoulder. Have committed right on the opposite 45. Easy call for the ref to make. Tough break for the Blazers. That'll bring the ball down to the It's another penalty. 35 yard line. It's only the third penalty of the whole game. Both teams have been pretty good because they stat lines for the first game. They only had two penalties. Florida Tech for 20. Blazers for 15. Three receivers out for the Florida Tech Panthers. Almost had a jump there. Looks like he tried to call him off sides. Didn't work. Clock winding down. Gets a snap, steps back to pass. Shoots downfield and incomplete for Florida Tech. Yeah, he really just almost jumped that. That really changed the momentum throwing that interception. I figured Florida Tech offense would pounce on that, but they're seeming to second down, 10 to go. Florida Tech down on the line. Three receivers. Hand off to Anton Haynes right at the middle. Brought down for a gain of two on the play. So that's one positive we've noticed on the defensive front for the Blazers. That run has been going for about seven yards every time, but they stuffed it right at the two-yard line there, or two-yard gain. My bad. Third Blazers. and eight. Blazers finally making their adjustments to that run game. All right, five wide receivers. Mark Cato back to take the snap. Steps back, checks his play again. Oh, they have empty backfields. Professional set right here. Ball snap. Runs up the middle. Interception. Intercepted. VSU ball back on the 29-yard line. Looked like that might have gotten not loose, or maybe he was just trying to give a little shuttle pass, but that was Charmaine Johnson on the interception. Pardon me, not Johnson, Washington. Charmaine Washington on there. That was an easy interception for him, too. Hit him right in the chest. I don't even know if he realized it was coming. So the ball's back, and I was just saying we have no – turnovers on the game and now we're back at one and one both teams all 
All right, VSU's offense takes the field, gets down on the ball. See, this isn't a run to the right here. It is. Finds a gap, starts driving, keeps driving. Takes him down at about the 20-yard line. That's good enough for a first down, though. VSU's really, they're really poking at their man defense here. Florida Tech's running. So watch, when you have two receivers to the left and one to the right, they put the fullback to the right as well. It's usually going to go that way. Stuart Spence, number 36, up back. He's going to line up to the left this time. Checks the play. Roman Wells takes the snap, handoff. Uh, finds a gap, finds again. a gap. Down to the two-yard line. How about that? Isaiah Johnson with an incredible run. Finds a couple gaps, gets great blocks on the play, and yeah. just takes off. Two-yard line. Isaiah Johnson really proven to be the explosive back for this game. Look at that. He just takes off, crashes through. They take him down right before the one-yard line. I'm, oh, I'm not going to be surprised to go with that right again. We got Spence to the left, two receivers to the right. See if this is in a. Isaiah Johnson to the left. And oh, we got a jump on the left side of the. False start. That'll be a false start. Number 57, Brandon Kemp. Got a little excited right there. You can't do that. Tough break for the Blazers on that one. Those penalties just kill your momentum. So I won't be surprised if they take to uh, running it all the way, see if they can just keep doing it till they run out of downs or just hopefully get on the board. You see what happened last time when they took to the sky. So looks like they're locked up man again. Yeah, I could. Johnson to the left. Run of the middle by Wells. He gets him down to the five yard line. Two yard run on the play. First down. Uh, should be going to the second. Should be second down and five to go. See if this formation can't tell us where this is about to go. Got two receivers to the right, one to the left. Johnson fell to the left, right. Let's see if this is made to go left. Steps back to pass over the top and too far. Really just overthrew him on that one. That's not a very tall receiver. But um, that's set up again. They're really trying to pull them to that run. Well, it's obvious, but that side of the line just looked loaded up as they're really catching on. Spence checking out of the game. Looks like they're going to get another receiver on the field, have doubles. Johnson in the backfield. Wells back to take the snap. Line sets up on the ball. Like they switch to a zone here. Notice the Johnson top right. And touchdown, VSU. Touchdown. Fake pass, little shuffle right there up the middle. Straight to Isaiah Johnson. So, Bo, we're watching two completely different teams here as the second half starts. VSU offense, take it to the scoreboard quick. Could have been second attempt they had, but it's 20 to 7 now. I'm sure they can. Settle for that. Extra point setting up. Andrew Gray back to attempt the extra point. Just Straight through the uprights. Like the Boom rest kick. of them, it's right down the middle. And that's 21 up. Florida Tech, seven. BSU, 21. So how do you think these teams are looking coming out, Bo? Like, this defense. Just falling apart for Florida Tech, it seems. I think they're just getting overwhelmed with just the just the massive different plays that VSU is putting on them now. Because at the beginning of the game, the VSU was coming out kind of flat, running the same plays over and over. But now they're switching it up I a agree little bit. With that. Coach Bell is really, or whoever their play calling has really changed, and it makes a lot more sense because they have already doubled. I mean, yeah, they've already doubled their passing and rushing stats from the first half. So like, this is a Brand new game, if it keeps going like this, this could get ugly for Florida Tech. See if they can respond. Andrew Gray, back to kick it again. So a 
rushing touchdown there. And he boots it down the field. Short kick only gets to about the 12 yard line. Great open field tackle by the Blazers. We have a flag down on the field. So VSU scored all their touchdowns by rushing so far, and that's the first one that wasn't Rogan Wells on the day. It's funny, they still can't stop it when you know it's about to be coming right between those tackles. Got holding. Holding on the receiving team. These teams are really going to step it up. I say expect a lot more flags this game or this half. Um, they're both going to probably put another put another gear. Let's see what happened here. He goes up to catch it. So you can see the holding. And it looked like it was right there. Number 50 for the VSU defense, return team. Two to the left, one to the right for the Florida Tech Panthers. Mark Cato back to take the snap. Tyler Wallace is the one that got held on that play. Run to the right. Taken down for a loss of two These on the play. runs aren't going to work. This defense keeps this up. VSU's defense really stepped up right here. They have absolutely shut down this run game. Let's see if, let's see if Florida Tech doesn't try to go to the sky again. That's where they found most of their success. Marcato back, take the snap, takes it, and run up the middle for a six-yard gain on the play. That'll be third down and four. Number six, Antoine Haynes with a carry. Eight-yard gain on the play. Three yards to go, brings up third down for the Panthers. Confusion on the Panthers' side of the field. Three to the right, one to the left. Gets a snap, run of the middle. Oh, and stuck. I'm sure Coach Englehart for Florida Tech had a good speech to their players, but it just seems like they're taking a step back right now. Good pass deflection there. Great block on that play. Lindsey joins in the game now. Actually, sorry, another. Andre Johnson on that breakup right over there. Good hand in there. Antoine Haynes joins back into the game. Takes over for Lindsey. Two to both sides. Haynes in the backfield. Sets back to pass. We're locked up. And he sacked. Fumbled oh, again. Fumble. And it looked like he got wrapped up and stripped by his own player on that. He was trying to get out, and it looked like he ran right in between one of the BSU blockers or rushers right there. Let's watch this. Yeah, that was number. 63, that was the center. Mark Cato getting a little beat up on these last couple drives. Blake Stone responsible for that fumble. So they got it back. Five receivers out. Mark Cato back, takes a snap. Back to pass. So they're gonna burn. Short pass up the middle and incomplete. Cato seems a little bit out of his rhythm this second half. Romel, Romel Rario was the intended receiver on that play, incomplete. The Blazer defense starting to get really high. Coach Verpel over there, rolling his troops. That'll bring out Making the punt sure team all again. All 11 men on the field. Kyle Gillickson, back to punt.
Dallas Got Ballner back to receive. And the kick is off. We'll see what Baldner can do with this. And calls for a fair catch. That is the second punt reception for VSU. Again, for zero yards. So we have zero yards on the punt return for the game. That brings VSU about that, to Bo? the 37 yard line. No punt yards, return yards on the whole game. They're just putting the punts where they need to be put. VSU's offense comes back out onto the field. Let's see if they can get back in the end zone again. Got two backs in the backfield. VSU switching it up. Maybe that's what this offense needs. Jordan Germany joins the backfield. Handoff. Runs to the right. Finds a gap. Gained about three on the play. Kenny Benjamin lined up extra in the back. This player's getting a little heated. That's what I said to expect from these teams. It's about to start getting heated up here. This is really a turning point in the game because if VSU can get on the scoreboard again, then they might just be in control of this. Got two to the left. One to the right, two running backs on the field. VSU has a new set. They have Brian Sons in the backfield, receiver, number 83. And they send Benjamin, and he bobbles it. Oh, there he goes. Finds a hole. Running down the sidelines. Great play. Benjamin stays alive all the way to the 15. What There's a some deception from VSU. It's first time they ran that play. What a recovery from Benjamin, number four, for the Blazers. He really bobbled that, and it's a first down. He picked that thing Huge right off the first ground. Down. It looked like it almost bounced. He bobbled that. If he would have caught that and ran with it, he might have. He would have been to the house. Jordan Wells takes the snap. Hand off Jordan Germany. Fires up the middle. Gain of about five on the play. It's really been a. Boring game play calling for VSU as they've had really called a bunch of the same calls, but with that one, they throw a little excitement in there and just with the swing pass, see if VSU doesn't keep this up. This might open back up the run. You got Spence back in the game for Benjamin. He's lined up to the left. Heavy set on the left. Let's see if this doesn't go to the right right here. Jordan steps to the left. Communicating with the coach. Look Play at the space right down. here on the right side. Run of the middle by Wells. And, and he takes they it. wanted it. Touchdown, and VSU. Obvious. Looks like they left that space there on purpose, want, daring them to run it, but they faked it, and Rogan Wells just split the C in the middle. Wells That's 27-7. Wow, 27-7, and Rogan Wells with the third rushing touch. My bad, fourth for VSU, his third on this game. Andrew Gray back to kick. Ball is up, and it is good. Number 41, Andrew Gray's extra point is good. And a fight breaks out on the field. Flag There's is thrown. There's a flag. We're going to have some unsportsmanlike here. Don't know which team. There's two flags, could be the same call, but. A little scuffle in the pile. Can't really see who or what happened right there. That's 28-7, VSU up now. And, Bo, oh, I tell you, they uh, see what this penalty is going to be, but Florida Tech needs to get something going right here. Yeah, Might start seeing these stands kind of clear out. Starting to fall behind. They're getting a little flat. They're not on their toes. They don't, they, didn't, they don't have the fire like they came out in the first quarter with. So we have double on Sportsmanlike. Not sure of the players, but both teams, and they offset, so we're off to the kickoff for VSU. 
Florida Tech puts two back deep. Let's see if they can bring it back this time without dropping it, putting it on the deck like they did last time. FSU is really getting loose now. It's a dangerous place for the uh, Florida Tech Panthers to be. As this team gets on a roll, they usually don't stop. VSU gets the ball. Andrew Gray back to kick. Sets up, takes the steps, and then. This Tech team really just looks like they're tightened up right now. Like, they have got to get something going. Ball away. Deep kick by Gray. Straight in the end zone, and the Panthers take a knee. For a touchback to the 20. There have been no field goal attempts at all this game. And if it keeps going like this, it's gonna how it's gonna how it's be. Excuse me, it's gonna how it's gonna be. For VSU, the story today has just been pounding it into the down to the red zone and just putting it right between the tackles. Cato only able to complete a few long passes for his touchdown. See what we have here, see if one of these backs don't split out. This is the first formation we've seen from them today, two backs. Marqueta takes a snap. Run to the right. They keep them two backs in there, I think. VSU might be able to shut them out pretty quick. Lindsey on the run on there. The field. That was Jeffrey Stokes, his helmet came off, so they send in substitution. Alex Williams to defensive end. See if they don't test that side right there, knowing that they just had a starter off the field. Notice their fullback lined up, left side, their offensive setup. Lindsey back with Cato. Takes a snap, hand off to Lindsey. Oop, steps back, pass. Deep downfield. Nearly an interception. Number 48 nearly got him. That was Alex Williams, and that's who just got on the field to replace the player, Jeffrey Stokes, whose helmet just came off, and looks like he's going to take a couple more plays. Big Pressure Cato there. there. Florida Tech's the on their feet. Struggling. Florida Tech gets on the ball. Third down and seven to go. Got six Takes on. Snap. They're sending the house. And they paid for it there. First down for the Florida Tech Panthers. Man on as Cato continues to pick on DeRozier. Down to the 39-yard line. Completed that to Rommel Garner. Yeah, that was a good catch. Really had him blocked out. That ball was right where it needed to be. VSU Blazers sent six on that blitz. Looks like they'll take a little more conservative approach. Couple players joining the game. Lindsey, oh, fumble on the play. There they go. And thrown out of bounds by Cato. And if they keep this up, they're about to have Mark Cato rattled. Good heads up play by Cato though, realizing that he didn't have anything available to go to, so he had to just get rid of it. More substitutions on the offensive side. Yeah, ball just went right between his legs and nearly taken. Just had a line on him. Had a player in the area, no intentional grounding on that. Two to the left, one to the right, three receivers. Hand off to Anton Hayes. Drops back Shovel to pass. To right. Nobody, nobody. That was there. a huge misread by Mark Cato. Both receivers dropped back for curls and Lucky no one was there. Huge miscommunication on the offense. VSU corners were locked in man, jumped on the curl routes, and that ball was just thrown well over their heads, landing on the 35-yard line. Brings up third down for the Panthers. This offense looks tired. Just can't come with a solution. We got a third and about 10. Looks like 10 or 11. Wide receiver. Brian Spurgeon joins in the game. Four receivers. 
Sends out Antoine Hayes. Drops back to pass. Right at the middle oh. and off the helmet. Big deflection right there. And it was nearly there to pick up an interception, but couldn't quite get to it. That was Kenneth Johnson in the area where that ball landed. If you notice the top side of the screen right there, Barry Jackson at defensive end just lined out up really wide out. I think VSU's finally figured out the best way they got to do is just keep the pressure off the edge on Mark Cato. Don't let him run and just make him make dumb throws. See if they can capitalize. Kyle Gillickson back to kick. Baldner back to receive. Gets it off. Short, Short punt. That ball looked like it bounced off one of the uh, defenders right there on the snap going back to Gilligan's. Short little floater. Just rolled right down to the 15. It'll be first and 10, VSU on the 15 yard line. Just like that, we have VSU has the ball back and let's see if they have any deception for the Florida Tech offense. Start putting this game away. Four minutes, nearly five minutes left in the third quarter. We have three receivers on the field. Spence and at fullback. Notice Spence lined off a little offset. Four sets an up back position. Brown Wells takes the snap. Hand off to. Not off. Good run up the middle. That's the first, first time first we've down. seen Ron Johnson, the senior out of Naples, Florida, in the backfield. A good little misdirection right there. Hit a little cutback. So see, they've been running the ball a lot off of the fullback and those formations where the field is just wide open. They're starting to use that to their advantage to deceive off the defense. And Johnson stays in the game. Same formation. Let's see how they do this. See if this isn't a play action. Takes a hike. Oh, fumble on the play. Tries to make something out of it. Finds a gap. Shoots it. And he's still on his feet. He's still going. So how about that? Rowan Wells gets a first down on the play. Ugly snap just skids across the turf, and Rogan Wells turns it into a first down. See this. Nearly taken. That's one. That's two, three. Broken tackles. And fourth finally to get him down. Got to watch him. Receiver's in a little tighter on this play. Spence motions the other side. Sits is in a run to the left off Spence. I think I should test that side. It's Back a pass. To snap. Wells takes it again, shoots the gap, and is put down right at the line of scrimmage. One thing I've noticed, they've really put the pressure on Wells, especially the fact that he can do that, take a terrible negative play and just turn it into something great. So Johnson stays in the game. We don't see we don't see Germany come back in. Same formation. Johnson steps over to the other side. Ron Johnson and Kenneth Johnson still isn't in. Wells takes the snap, hands off to Johnson. Johnson bounces there outside. Goes. Right down close towards the first down marker. I think it'll be a yard short. That'll be third down and short. So how about that? They have a new back end, and they're running him in a different kind of style. He's more of seeing success hitting the edges right there. Here it goes. Takes off and just meet him right on the edge. Good pursuit by this Panther defense. Same formation. Wide receivers out wide this time. Look, we got two to the right again, one to the left, and Spence. Right. Wells up the middle, wow. finds a gap. Another first down for Wells, VSU Blazers. It's interesting how they had that play designed just to look, push everyone to one side of the field, and he just completely did a 180 and turned around and ran with it. Wells, that's be a tough dude. Go just run it, take all these hits. 
We have a player down on the field for Florida Tech Panthers. It's number 30 here. Evan Thompson, freshman linebacker out of Clermont, Florida. Trainers assessing him. Should give the Blazer offense some time to figure out what their next move is going to be. And Florida Tech needs to get this stop. Yeah, the Blazers keep pushing and pushing. We'll see if uh, Florida Tech can get a stop here. And Thompson is to his feet. It's like he's walking off fine, just shaking up a little bit on the play. And we'll be surprised we see him back in a couple plays. Looks like he probably just got the wind yeah. knock out of him. Just walks over and just hangs out. Coach is checking on him. VSU on the side in their huddle, deciding what they want to do next. We've got the same formation. We have two to the right, one to the left. Spence to the right. They're stacking the right side on this play. Seeing where they go. Motion Spence to the left. Hand off to Johnson. And who is stopped for a loss on the play. First, first big swarm right there. And they get into it. Johnson didn't like that. Another flag he got down. up on that play. Player just sat on his back. Straddled him. Johnson felt it was intentional, so he snapped back at him. I'll be curious to see who gets his flag. So before that, this Florida Tech crowd here just they're getting loving on it. the refs. They were just infuriated. And now after that one. First big, big stop for a loss that Florida Tech's had. So see if that doesn't discourage this VSU offense and give them a spark of hope to stop on defense. But Florida Kenny Tech Benjamin. crowds silence now. Kenny Benjamin joins in the game. We have a minute and 10 seconds left in this quarter. Clock's just rolling right now. Wells back, take the snap. Fakes it, little shuffle pass up the middle. And is stopped for no gain on the play. Interesting little pass right there. Florida Tech Panthers crowd just loving it. Blazers are back to it. This will be a long, uh, long third, third down. 25. Check this out. Yeah, they stuffed him. So VSU's really finding struggles to bust the defense open on these passes. They're really depending on these side runs. Rogan Wells running right up the middle. We'll see what he can do. Got 13 seconds Rogan left. Back. Says about to pass. Dump right over the middle. He's got some running room. Finds another gap. That was a good play. Kenny Benjamin on that reception, and that's a good little play, but gets right back to the line and fumble recovery. Wow. Kenny Benjamin put it on the deck, and clock stops there. We have three seconds left in the third, but what a huge fumble. So Benjamin drops it on the 40, and let's see if. I think that was some confusion. I think he thought he was down on the play and dropped the ball. Well, that's a fumble for VSU and all of a sudden it's a huge turn of events for Florida Tech. Florida Tech's about to have a long timeout. See if they don't let this clock stop so they can get off the field. And they're going to run a play to end the third quarter. Sets back to pass. Right and it's up in the air. Intercepted by VSU. He's got a gap. He's taking it. Great play by VSU. And VSU will not 
Feet Raymond nine. Palmer. Strong safety. This gets defense, an interception. That really just sets it. This defense is really dialed in on Cato. Watch Cato as he pops it. Deflection and interception. He takes it for a good 10, 15 yards on the play. Palmer making a difference. So tell the take. Before this started, this half, we had zero, we had zero turnovers by either team. And now we have two from both. 28 to 7 going into the fourth quarter now. How about that though, Bo? Man, it's just back and forth now. Beginning of the game was crazy. It was good straight up football. Now it's interceptions, fumbles. This turned into a ball game. All right. Well, that's 28-7, begin the fourth quarter, and we will be right back on BSU TV. Valdosta, Georgia. It's all you need with innovative minds that feed a thriving business environment, all with access to international contacts and a university influence with championship teams. It's premier healthcare and a community that's metropolitan, yet inviting. Valdosta, Georgia, all you need. And we're back. VSU has the ball on the 38 yard line. Wells back to take the snap. Motions the receiver across the field. Fakes a handoff back to pass. Wide open out of the field. And that seemed like it would have been pass interference. So that's the first time we've seen Baldner in motion. But Panther is just, VSU put, throws it in the air, puts it on the ground, and then Panthers come right around, do the same, throw an interception, and this keeps up. This game might just end 28-7, and I mean, see if they can't capitalize and see what the Panthers do. Spence back in the game on the left side. Communicating. Coach over there on the sideline. Rest blow whistle, flag on the play. That was blown dead. That could be encroachment on the defense, if not false start. Looks like false start on the offense. And there you have it. See if we can keep the ball out of the other team's hands now. And this past drive and a half for Blazers have been tough. A lot of, a lot of penalties and flags have been thrown. Confusion over there on the sidelines. Trying to get, trying to get everybody on the same page here as Rogan Wells keeps calling out the wide receivers and his line. Motions receiver, takes a snap, rush. Show pressure for Wells, throws down the field, and had the guy wide open, but just overthrew him out of bounds. He had pressure on that play. He couldn't really plant his feet to send that ball down the field. So BSU, 219 passing yards. What's going to happen here? The teams are slowing down again. Let's see if they can't have some positive yardage here. Play clock winding down. Got about 15 yards to go for the first, third down. Wells takes the snap, rush on the play. That's a flag. That's going to be a illegal block there on the offense. He really got that player from behind. It was a good catch on that play, but. That looked like Andrew Marshall right there. I they're going to pin him. That's Marshall. Got him for holding. Yeah, that was an obvious, obvious mistake by Marshall. Now, we now got third and really long looking at the Blazers. Third 
extra long here. They're back down to their 47 Third now. Third and about 20-something. Coach Bell looking like he's wondering what's going on. Blazers need to start figuring it out because they were doing good when they were doing these quick plays earlier in the game. They just have to keep the ball off the deck. Mm -hmm. Quit putting it down. Got four receivers out there. Wells takes it up the middle and hit hard. Another flag there on the play. That'll be and on Florida Tech. Now, Florida Tech's just really doing a bad job of letting their nerves ride. That was Charmaine Washington. No. That was Tushumbi Johnson, wide receiver on that play. Flag was on Robert Foy from Florida Tech. That's blatant, and he even knew it. He just walked straight off. His teams are really getting rattled now. So we're back to third down again. It would be now a third and it seems like it'll probably be back to the it'll be close to the line of scrimmage again. So probably about third and ten. Question is, are they just gonna put it on him? What are they gonna call on him? So they call on Sportsman like on both players, but really it was all number five. He walked off of that one, but this VSU home crowd is not pleased about that. Coach Bell isn't having it either. Looked like a pretty obvious unsportsman like one way. That would have put them, I should have put them right across and kept this drive alive, but now it's looking like a fourth down, middle of the field. Looks like VSU is now going to bring out the punt team. Florida Tech loving these long yard situations, so you got to pin them deep. Florida Tech got lucky with that one. They could, that could have came back and haunted them. So now, Andrew Gray back to punt, boots down the field. Fair catch down at the seven yard line. Let's see what the Blazers can do on defense. So Florida Tech's put the ball down three times, and fumbles, and lost it twice, threw one interception, VSU's thrown one, dropped one and lost that as well. So now that's the first turnover in a few minutes that wasn't on a interception or fumble. Both Pin teams take the fin field. Excuse me. Watch the defensive ends here. They really like to send the heat right here on the edge, right when they can get this quarterback right on the goal line. And notice number 90 out there. Mark Cato back to take away with Antoine Hayes. Four Watch. receivers on the field. Hand off to Antoine Hayes, finds a gap. Taken down. Charmaine Big Washington. hit. Big Charmaine hit. Charmaine Washington got in there for a good little stick. Gain of about two on the play. And there's a flag. A flag. Is that calling on Sportsmanlike on VSU? We had two different flags flying, it seems. Defensive players are celebrating right there, but it didn't seem like much. What do you think about all these penalties, Paul? Well, now it's just some of them, some of them kind of bad calls, but right here is kind of, kind of questionable. They've been letting them play a lot throughout the game. Like, yep. Of course, two unsportsman likes, double unsportsman likes that offset have to be called, and then let's see what we got here. Waiting on a call from the referee. It might be. It might have been some talk on the field, and they picked their flags up. Number nine, 
Well, how about that? Charmay Washington gets an unsportsmanlike after a hit. Celebration and Okay, the ref had the call wrong there. It was first one for Washington, but so that gave him an unsportsmanlike. Stays in the game. Offensive number nine for BSU also has one though. Show me Walt Johnson. And both of these crowds right now are confused. <laughs> it's a weird atmosphere we have right now. The refs seem like they're wondering what's going on. I don't think. Well, they're moving the ball down the field. All, I think they all agree on that call there, Bo. Mm -hmm. I wonder, it makes you wonder, there has to have been something said down there. It didn't look like he did much to draw a flag, but. Yeah, that wasn't much of a celebration. It wasn't over, it wasn't excessive at Either all. Either way, there's a timeout taken and both teams rebuttal, calm their teams down. Full team huddle for VSU over here. A whole team surrounded around Coach Bell. Coach Bell definitely giving it to him right now. It looks like they're just, it's like they're not too tightened up, probably not getting on them, just letting them know. This ball game's in our hands right now. Don't let them ruin it for them. It's an important game for both teams, so it's going to get like this. And the VSU crowd standing ovation for the Blazers as they walk back to the sideline. Blazers seem hyped up, so it wasn't much of a chewing out, more of a Motivation, like, let's go get them. Four receivers on the field for Florida Tech. Antoine Haynes and Cato in the backfield. Motions, uh, Haynes, back to man, pass. Man coverage here and. Oh, fumble. He strips him. Let's see what he's got here. Did he get the ball before it went out of bounds? Uh, the, the ball, ball went out right fell before out the Right receiver. before, if it was a fumble. Three yard gain on the play. That'll bring them to second and seven. That was a man matchup right there. Let's see. Looks like they're about to go for the same. We got two safeties deep. Three receivers on the field. Goes for a shuffle pass. Option. He's Option. got a line on him and he cut right by him. Over pursued just a little bit right there. Brandon Rowe had a good line on him, just didn't break down and taken down three yards short after that. Antoine Hayes with the run right that there. Ball, that was definitely a fumble there earlier. It's too bad he couldn't get on that. Yeah, he knocked that out, but that was a easy fumble. Run by Cato up the side, slides right near the 50. So this Florida Tech offense just seems like it's slowly coming back to life. And 12 minutes left. BSU defense definitely needs to stay on his toes, and another score would definitely put this game in a safe range. But yeah, you definitely can't sleep game, on this Florida Tech this offense. Game camp, it's not over yet, but as long as they can capitalize, we'll see. Handoff to Antoine Hayes, and he is stuffed for a loss. Two-yard loss on the play. That'll bring up second and 12. And I think the VSU defense is saying no, they're not going to let them. So that's a yard of loss. Big play right there for VSU to make that make that stop. Three receivers out on the field for Florida Tech. Tied into the right. Watch to the right here. It's a man matchup and man. no flags down. No flags. Receiver looked like he fell down on that play. He just tripped over his own shoelaces. So Shane that. Henderson, I'm sorry, Malik Slater looked like he was looking for a flag, like he got tripped. But the other, the receiver is the one that fell, didn't get it. But maybe these refs will actually let him play a little bit now. A couple substitutions on Florida Tech side. Trips to the right. 
stacking the right side of the field. Florida Tech and the whistle is blown. Timeout for Florida Tech. So if you didn't see the scoreboard, I mean, you'd think this game was still pretty tight, which, I mean, it's still in contention, you know. But both, both sidelines are, excuse me, both crowds are really into it right now. I think it's these refs that are firing up the fans so much. Finally starting to get a couple calls right, but that little gap in there, that was kind of kind of iffy. Yeah, we'll see if we get the huddle here. Please turn your attention to the field for a fan favorite game, laser bounce. The students will bounce down and What do you think the coach is telling the defense right now? I mean, we have third down about 11 yards. How do you think they're approaching this coming up on third down? Definitely going for a pass right here. Our passing has been their most successful attempts by far. So on third down conversions, the third quarter, up to the third quarter, Florida Tech has had two conversions out of nine attempts. See if VSU can't get a stop here. They've cool. still yet to be in the red zone. Florida Tech with two receivers to the left. Looking to blitz here. Looks like they're about to send the house. See if one doesn't drop back. Mark Cato can make them pay for it here. And they're off. Flag down on and the play. Pass up the middle. Wide open. That's what's going to happen when you send the house like that. But good protection there. VSU brings him down the right to about the 35-yard line. We'll see what this flag's about. See right here, flag could be a holding, could be a late pre-snap flag. Waves the flag off, no flag on the play, so it just remains for a big gain for Cato, throwing over the middle to the tight end and that's what happens when you leave the field wide open in the middle and you have all man, but we'll see what exactly is about to come out and hand off of Florida Tech. Busts up the middle, finds a gap for a it's close to first down, nine yard gain. And this is going to be the first trip all game for the Florida Tech offense into the red zone. They're right on about right the between the tackles again. Two receivers to the right. Another handoff and stuff, but it looks like he will get a first down on that play. They're trying to test the middle again, it seems like they see something down there, some kind of seam that's open. One yard gain on the play by the Panthers. See what we got here. Takes back a snap, deep. back to pass, goes deep. There it goes. And, and how touchdown about a for Mark Cato passing touchdown. And Perfectly placed there by Cato, right over the top of the defender's head. Nothing's changed as Cato continues to go to the sky for a touchdown. Let's see what we had here. Cato drops back. Good pass, good coverage it seems. That was a great uh, play Andre all around. Johnson, and he just got it right over his head there. Cato continues to attack from the sky. Kyle Gillickson takes the kick, puts it through the uprights, and it is good. The score now is 28 to 14, and VSU. Now this VSU crowd seems to have a look despair on their face again, even though they're 14 up. So we just need to get back, see if they could get back on the board. Like I said earlier, you can't sleep on a, this Florida Tech offense. If you let off at all, take your foot off the throw, they'll come back and get you. Both teams play. The third quarter was about the best quarter we've seen all day. Now both teams kind of falling back to how they started. And definitely fatigue starting to set in, mentally and physically. 
Both of these teams going at it. Gillick sent back to kick. As we VSU have Jerry's defense Jones. looks ready. Notice they have a few up. Uh, VSU has a few uh, returners up shallow, waiting for an onside, and ball is up and away. Puts it deep. Finds a gap. There he goes. The and they take him down right at the other, the opposing 47-yard line. Great run for Blazers. Kenny Benjamin just looked like he wanted to take that as soon as he received it. Watch, leaned out full speed. He hit the hole so hard right there. And bam, an arm tackle's not going to take him down. Yeah, they caught him from behind, but Benjamin came out with some steam right there. That's looks like enough to me to get this Blazer offense amped back up. Three receivers on the field. Spins to the right. And Jordan Germany's back in the game. Germany back in for first time in a few plays. Wells takes the snap, hands off to Jordan. Jordan busts up the middle and is shoelace. That was for a no gain on play, maybe easy one yard. Stop there. That linebacker, he had a blitz on that gap, was already on the other side before Germany even got the ball. It'll be they line straight back down. Second and ten for the Blazers. Germany to the other side now. This looks like a passing situation here. The way they have it lined up, looks like it would be a pass right over the middle. And they get them off sides, and that looks like that's a catch. That's a catch. Did he stay in? No, he didn't, but that's a free play. Defense jumped off sides there. It's probably going to be a free play, yep. And Five yards up. Let's get the official call from the ref. There it is, and just like that, repeat second down from the 42-yard line and five to go. So that kept this offense back in there, but almost good catch right there. Spence having a word with the their head coach. Deshaun Blair. Had a great catch, just obviously just fell a little far out. Good heads up play though. Wells takes the snap, steps back to pass. Finds a hole and takes it up the sideline for a first down. A gain of about 10 on the play. And that's Tashumbi Johnson. Keep an eye on him again, because him, both number nines, offensive and defensive, that's Shumby Johnson and Charmaine Washington, both have unsportsmanlike, so we're probably going to see better behavior out of them, but he works for those extra yards, just driven out right around the 32-yard line, 34-yard line, excuse me. See if both of these teams don't get their heads back on their shoulders. Seems like they're playing a little more composed. Three receivers on the field, playing a little tighter now. So we have man. Hand off to Jordan Germany, busts it up the middle. Oh, he finds a hole, he's still going. Another first down, again, about 15 on the play there. That brings the Blazers down to the 20 yard line. They ran a zone right there, and that bottom side looked like they had a it's number 80 right there. That was wide open, which that was a good run, but that could have been a good little bubble route by Jamarcus Tyson. See if they don't go back to that. Good blocking all, all around down there on the line. Open up that lane perfectly for Jordan Germany just to hit it. Wills takes a snap. Another handoff, same play. And he gets another close to first down. Gain of six on the play. Four to go. That will bring up second and four for the Blazers. On the 14-yard line. Jordan Germany comes out of the game. So 
we got two down to the right side of the field. We've got Spence lined up back to the left. It's a good formation to run it to the left again here. Isaiah, as they like to show, at least. Isaiah uh, Johnson jumps in for Jordan Germany. And there it is. It's the run, run to the, the left. Man, he's fast. Gets Florida, it down. Florida Tech defense doesn't really do a good job showing that. That's an easy, easy read right there. I'm sure Wells has the Wells has the okay to pull that if he needs to, but every single time there's just two guys there and they're just lined in man. That run brings the Blazers to a first down at the six yard line. Let's see if they can get in the end zone. Same formation here. See if it's the same thing. Maybe a little play action deception. Lined up in the same formation. Spence to the left. And Wells takes it. Gets up the sideline and uh, takes the nowhere. loss on the play. They two, wanted that. Two-yard loss. So good read on that. They weren't falling for it. I guess they figured wouldn't run the same play to the left. Could have worked, but all over Wells on that one. Florida Tech looking to end Wells' rushing day. I think they're, they know what this means in the red zone. Three touchdowns belong to Wells. Other one belongs to Johnson, so you know who to go for. Jordan Germany re-enters the game. Lines up to the left of Wells. Play clock winds down to seven. Wells takes a snap, steps back, passes. Over the top, wide open. touchdown, VSU. Wide open, the defender stumbled and And Shumby out. Johnson catches that touchdown, put the Blazers up 35-14, and he just hits this out right here and absolutely burns the other player, Latuan Sutton, sophomore out of Rockledge, Florida right there, giving up that play. Andrew Gray back to attempt the extra point. And flag down on the play. Looks like a false start a for the Blazers. confusion there, but flag on the play. just like that, 34-14, waiting for the extra point. Offense on the point. defense, actually. Excuse me. Waiting for the extra point, but for the extra point. less than six minutes left in the fourth. And this game is looking like it's uh, over with. Florida Tech looking for some miracles now. And everyone gets back down on the ball. Andrew Gray, get ready and do attempt the extra point again. And he boots it right through the uprights. Consistent extra points right through the middle. VSU crowd came back to life, and now Florida Tech silenced. Standing around in disbelief, seems they know it's going to take something really special to put them back in this one. Fight on the sideline between Florida Tech players. The Florida Tech players are fighting each other. It's number 90 and number nine, number 18. Tensions are high on this so side of the field. Now it's not even with the teams anymore. The players are fighting one another. They're broken up and number 90's had it on the day. He's on the far side of the 30 to the left. Andrew Gray back to kick again. High kick. Short, but it got up there. Receives it on the 10-yard line. Oh, and trips up and falls right, at, right before the 20-yard line, about the 18. So, Bo, this is Darius Goodman off the D-line, sophomore. And he uh, he might have been the one to cause something 
with a penalty earlier, but he's on the far, far side of the field of his own sideline by himself. The coach just talked to him, trying to figure out what's going on. And it's interesting. Man, he's Thortex had a tough game today. I just been getting knocked around a Let's little see bit. What Mark Cato has to do if he can answer back and see what he can do to get him back on this. Two receivers to the left side. Cato takes snap, drops back for the pass, and sacked. Ankle tackle and slight takedown by Henry Pryor. Cato slow to get up on that play. It's the sophomore out of Jacksonville, Florida. little foot tackle. That's the first time you've seen Cato go down like that. It's just like his team's getting drained right now. I think he might have twisted his ankle a little on that, trying to plant and go back the other way. But that brings the Florida Tech Panthers to a second down and long, about 15 yards. Fumble on the play. Florida Tech is falling apart. They're just having a tough time getting all these plays going. Yeah, Florida Tech's really seem to have given up right now, and I'm sure VSU is going not going to do so. I'm sure they're going to want to see if they can close this out, sound win, possibly another score, but they have them deep in their own territory, third and about 16. Cato two, three yards out of the end zone. Yeah. Two receivers to the right, stacked to the right side. Cato back to pass. Little, little dump pass up the middle, shuffle pass. Finds a gap, though. Good little, good little gain up the middle there to the right. And if that's all Florida Tech has, this one might be said and done. That'll bring up fourth down for the Panthers. Got them back to the original line of scrimmage that they were at. If I were Cato or the offense coordinator, I would be thinking to test the corners again. I mean, they found success in testing DeRozier on the close side of the field. All their success has been in, I mean, deep passes today. Timeout called for the Panthers. It is that time again where we get another student that will attempt a field goal from the 25-yard line. We've got less than four minutes left, and this game seems to be over with. We'll see if they leave everyone in to close it out. Safe win. And almost. Florida Tech sidelines still seem to be a little divided down here. You still got the player that was involved in that fight earlier, still down on the bench to this left side. They're definitely tense right now. VSU, VSU looks more loosened up. Looks like they're wanting to get another shot. And fourth and 10. Fourth and 10 like and they're going Mark for it. Cato's going to go for it or at least look for a call off sides. But honestly, if he throws a deep ball, for an interception, it won't be too much of a bad thing. And see what he does. And he's getting bottled up, and he escapes. He's taken oh, down. Oh, fumble. fumble. Fumble on the four-yard line, but it doesn't matter. We got – Blazers got the ball back. Well, the Blazers, see, they do have to be careful here. I understand that play call. But the coach looks really disappointed in that. That's definitely a play where you just wanted to drop back really quick and just throw a bomb down the field, pretty much a Hail Mary. And if you come up with it, it's a great play. But if you don't, at least they catch it or you throw it to the defender. You know, you take the ball from the middle of the field. But now, VSU, pretty obvious situation. Wells will probably go up the middle here. Who you calling for this touchdown, Bo? Wells. I try to get a four on the board there for him. I think we're going to have a uh, – we might see a pass to test. Spence comes on the field. Timeout called for 
the Blazers. If you're VSU, I think you might take an opportunity to do something a little creative here. They know how you want to score. They know how you can score. See if they can't get a passing touchdown off right here. Seems like a timeout. This Florida Tech sideline really just like they're ready to go home. They're all just scattered talking to each other. The crowd looks about fed up. Clock to three, three minutes and 47 seconds. So we got first down, ball on the four. VSU seems pretty relaxed over there on that side of the field. It's going to be a win, most likely, for VSU. Florida Tech retakes the field as the Blazers are still in their huddle. The Blazers are looking for an opportunity to be able to score again and give their reps to the second string. Always important when you have the opportunity. So we already, we already have different receivers in the game. Baldner's out. And Wells takes the snap, hands it off to Jordan Germany, and Jordan Germany is stopped for no gain on the play. Jordan comes off the field. Oh, never mind, he's staying in the field, staying in the game. Let's see what they're going to get going on here. So we have a different split now. It looks like we have, for VSU, lining up their up backs, or full backs as they're listed. They're lined up in the tight end spot. You have Spence to the right. Only two receivers out. It's an interesting setup. Motions wide receiver, hands off the wide receiver going jet around. sweep, and he cuts up. Looks like shoving, at the pile, shoving. where are they going? They're going to stop forward progress right before the goal line. Gets down to the one yard line, two yard line. Interesting setup they had there. They threw a little special little play in. It was number 49 on the other tight end. So that's Josh Turner listed as an offensive lineman. But So we see a double tight end set by obviously not tight ends. Let's see if they go back to this. And now, how about this? Three backs in the backfield. In the backfield. <laughs> See if they run a veer here. Motions Jordan Germany out to the side. Easy block. And, and guess who got the touchdown? Wells in for number four. Touchdown, There's Blazers. There's another one for Wells. Let's watch the replay. So they use the big boys. Just to scrape right here and just blow them out. They send Germany out, so it's a man situation. It's a beautiful play there. I think out of back, follow, follow Germany out of the out of the backfield, and then the two fullbacks. There's just no one to match no ma to match Wells on that. It just out muscled them into the end zone. Andrew Gray, attempt for the extra point is good. And that is 41-14, right above two minutes. And Bo, what do you think the next step for this uh, team is about to be after this game for Florida Tech? Florida Tech, they're definitely going to be uh, – their coach out. is definitely going to sit them down and have a talk on how to uh, conduct themselves and hanger their, uh, handle their anger. Like they so much that, that they just good. lost really composure. I think that's just individuals, but that's the composure just disappeared as they just the game went on. They looked scary to start with as it just came out slinging it. We'll see if we don't see some substitutions and second string on both sides. This game's far too out to win now. Andrew Gray back to kick yet again for another kickoff. High kick by Gray. 
short, caught down around the 15-yard line. And good block. Cuts it back, goes to the middle. Ooh. Chased down from behind, and Found there a hole, is. made it out to about the 32-yard line. Good pursuit there. Kahari Richards, sophomore out of Riverdale, Georgia, on that chase down. It looked like he kind of misread that pun, almost overdid him. Good cut up field right there. Just take down. Looks like we have some new numbers on the field now. Cato is still in the game, along with See what we got going on. They have a tight end one side and up back on the other. Lindsey joins in the game as a like They're running it right up the middle as they Find have the been. Gap. And good run. Excellent run. Lindsey, a big power runner, finds that gap and just hits it hard. Yeah, it's a Kai Lindsey, sophomore out of Palm Bay, Florida. Makes it down to the opposing 45-yard line. A good size back, 5'9". 215. It's a big boy. That resembles some successful professional backs I'm sure you know of. Devontae Freeman. I'm sure they're just going to get plays off now. Cato showing some fatigue back there. Letting the clock run down. Try, just trying to get this game over with. Takes a snap. Hand off up the middle again. Lindsey gets about a three-yard gain on the play. Two-yard gain on the play. Eight to go, second down for the Panthers. Two-yard gain on the play. This will be second and eight. Marcato, a lot of Florida Tech's players really have nothing to work about as far as college season goes. They seem to be really good players. Cato, a redshirt senior, so this will be his last season. He's definitely got a good enough arm to go to the next level. We'll just got to see how he works out with everything. Another run up the middle. Good run by Lindsey. Taken down right at the first down marker, maybe a yard short. That'll bring up third and one. Ten seconds left on the clock. And looks that like they're is taking the game. this victory and that's it. They're calling it. Florida Tate didn't try to run anything too flashy there just to get out of the game. So that's it. Your Blazers 42, Panthers 14. Gulf South matchup. The Blazers move on to win another game and their hopes stay alive as they face West Alabama next week at 3.30. Thank you for joining us this after this evening. I'm Paul Rose. And I'm Bo Blair.